birth parents, you know, one of the things to, to heal the, the relationship with the birth parents, you, you have to remember, birth parents, that that little abandoned baby resides in every adoptee. And even though you, you didn't want to abandon the baby and you feel as if you didn't really abandon the baby, this is how the baby experienced it. Now, I know I have had to apologize to my kids for some things I may have said when they were little that, that I did not intend to hurt them at all. It doesn't matter what my intention was because how I impacted them was how they perceived it and how it affected them. I need to apologize for how they perceived it, not how I intended it. And that's why sometimes I tell birth mothers, you need to tell your kids you're really sorry for having signed that paper and take responsibility for it. Even if you, you know, had your mother and father's hands writing it for you, you have to take responsibility and tell, tell them you're sorry because you may not have intended to hurt them and everybody was telling you you were being selfish if you wanted to keep them. But they need to hear from you. And you know, miracles can happen when we do that. Miracles can happen when we actually apologize for how our kids perceived what we did or said. And it's hard. I mean, it was hard for me and I didn't even give up a baby. I can't even imagine how hard it is for birth mothers to do that when they felt as if they had no choice. But it makes a difference to the adopted person. And that's what you want. You know, you want to get closer. Um, and if you, if, if the birth parents want their child to forgive them, they need to forgive their parents as well. Because in a lot of cases, it was their parents that insisted that the neighbors not know that they're an unwed mother, right? And of course, many of them, upon reflection, realized, I just made my daughter give up my grandchild. And many of them were very, very sad about that, you know, after some hindsight. But, <clears throat> but it's very important that we all understand one another's pain. We all understand one another's pain. Um, you don't, birth parents don't bail out when going gets rough, and some of you will say, you know, it's interesting to me that adoptees have been waiting all their lives for their birth mothers to come and find them. In some sense, you know, they've always kind of internally and afraid of it at the same time because they don't want to be taken away from the parents they have now. So, but there's always this kind of waiting, waiting, waiting. Kind of thing. And then I'll have birth mothers say to me after their child has decided, okay, I've had enough of birth mother, and they don't even decide. They just don't answer emails. They don't answer texts. They don't answer the phone. They don't. They don't communicate with their birth mother for maybe months at a time. So the birth mothers will come to me and say, how long am I supposed to put up with this? And I say, well, how long did your kid put up with it? How long did they wait for you? They waited a very long time. So you may be having to wait a long time too. Now when I talk to the adoptees about this, I say, okay, okay. You know, your birth mother knows that you're trying to let her know how hard it was for you to wait and wait and wait and wait for her. Now, they're not doing this consciously. They really will tell you, well, I just didn't have time or I just didn't have time. They really believe that in some way, that they didn't have time. But what they're really doing is trying to, you know how they do this projective thing, they're trying to let her know what it was like to just wait and wait and wait and wait. I mean, they do this quite frequently. They'll have this honeymoon period, they'll have a wonderful time, and then all of a sudden, nothing. No communication. So, birth mothers, your child waited until you was, until they were 30, or something. So now, hopefully it won't be that long. It was 10 years for somebody in Saskatoon. Um, and I kept telling her, keep sending those notes once a month, send a note, let them know you're still there, let them know you're still there. After 10 years, her, her child wrote to her and said, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to meet you. I mean, that's a long time to wait. Oh, <clears throat> went on it. <clears throat> I want to have a really nice relationship. So there's hope, you know. The adoptee often feels like a little baby. The birth mother feels like she's 15 years old. And then we have this whole teenage baby thing again. It didn't work out very well in the first place. <laughs> so, 
And it doesn't always work out very well in the second place. Now, if the birth mother was older, sometimes it's better. But, you know, there's still that regression back into shame and guilt and all of that kind of thing. And one of the things I tell birth mothers is if you find somebody else to tell your story to, you can tell, you can tell the adoptee once the story of their birth and relinquishment, surrendering, or whatever, and what happened after that. But don't keep telling them over and over. And if they tell you how hard it was for them to be without you and how hard it was in their adoptive family for them for some reason or another, you know, don't start telling them again about how hard it was for you. They want to know that you suffered. They really do. They want to know that you suffered because you gave them away. But they don't want to be told about it over and over again because then they have to start taking care of you. And, and they shouldn't have to be taking care of you.